Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for checking out another episode of the show. Today's feature is my new friend, Brett Perella of Everbloom. Had a really uh, a lot of fun hanging out with Brett, talking about uh, the band, talking about some scary movies and uh, all kinds of uh, fun stuff. So, hope you dig this one. Do want to remind you, as always, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler, located here in St. Louis, Missouri, over in the Maplewood area. Swing by the shop or shop 24-7 at roughneckbeardcompany.com. Use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's officially beard season. With fall and no-shave November right around the corner, this is prime time to grow a beard. And Roughneck Beard Company has you covered. Using a good beard oil from day one of growth sets the stage for a faster, fuller, and healthier growth. Avoid dry skin and the dreaded beard itch with combining, combined with Roughneck's Genesis and a vitamin punch that really gets things moving. Stop in today or order online to build your kit and kick your growth into high gear. Again, find everything at roughneckbeardcompany.com and uh, use my code RPP15 for 15% off all your favorite beard oils, beard balms, their junk powder, or uh, one of my personal favorites, their Roughneck Beard Batter is back in stock, so check that out today. If you'd like to continue to support the show, a great way to do so would be stop by the merch store. Uh, check out buyjack.com slash rockpaperpodcast for some, some shirts and some hats and tank tops and all kinds of various colors and sizes. Uh, it's a uh, it's really cool seeing those out there already. You know, we got a bunch of people wearing those little shiny shirts and the hats, and it's, uh, it always makes me smile. So thank you to all those that have uh, purchased already. It means uh, so much to me. Um, and uh, big announcement coming up on sep- uh, we're November 28th, uh, the return of Deb Stock to Old Rock House. So come on out and join me. Three to seven, Old Rock House in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this will be a benefit raising money and awareness for glioblastoma brain cancer. Uh, if you uh, unaware, my mother passed in 2019 from glioblastoma, and I'm just trying to do my part to uh, raise some funds and awareness for some mothers in need. So I'm bringing along my super talented friends in one-way traffic. Nick Gusman and the Coyotes, the Screeching Halts, and Spank On Ya. Uh, again, all that uh, for $15, you get four amazing bands, three to seven, November 28th, Old Rock House in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, grab tickets at MetroTix.com today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. I appreciate all of you. Uh, if you need me, of course, you can find me at rockpaperpodcast.com. Hit me up on the email, rockpaperpodcast at gmail, any of the socials, whatever it is. I would love to hear from you all. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy this brand new episode with Brett Perella. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, It makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, It sounds like this. Uh, This is Brett from Everbloom, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Scissors beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beat scissors, Shane covers nonstop. Never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks. Could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker fudge round, rolling round town. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero, he's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Rock Paper Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. 
hanging out today with Brett Perella. That's me. Hey, hey, welcome to the show, man. Well, thanks for having me. This is uh, very cool, very interesting because uh, you know this is our very first time meeting. We uh, we just became uh, friendly the other day through uh, mutual friend Chuck. Uh, but now, uh, which is I don't know, he's um, kind of helping. Uh, he sent me some ideas. I, I think I know he's mentioned it, and then like, and he's mentioned a couple of people to me, but like. Now that he knows I do the show and everything else, he wants to help contribute and things. So it's cool that he's pitching uh, guests and uh, you know, even I show to other people and stuff. So thank you to Chuck for helping make this all possible. Hell yeah, man. I don't know. Am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, we can say thing? whatever. It's on the internet. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was exciting. It's As soon as I told him I was in a band, he's like, oh, my friend does a podcast where he interviews right. musicians and comedians just local art i was like well i'm local <laughs> yeah yeah man i uh i i started this uh like seven years ago just uh as a fan and and i had these friends that played music and i was wanting to do all i could to help promote and support them and stuff giving them a platform to talk about things and podcasting started taking off around then uh, at least becoming more a lot more popular uh, i started listening to a lot and i was like man I, I think i was writing a blog prior to that like and I'm not the best writer. It was the same thing, same principle. I was wanting to just uh, do like album review type of things. But right. most of it was like, hey, listen, these songs, I think these are my favorites. Well, better to put it in audio format where I can just play the songs right there instead of telling you, go, hey, go find these songs and or link it up and everything. It's so, convenient. Right. I mean, even when I'm working, I'm always listening to some podcast. Yeah. I mean, there's one for everything at this oh, point. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, that's how I tell a lot of people. I'm like, whatever you're passionate about, there's somebody else that's oh, yeah. undo it also, and they're recording a podcast about it. So yeah, it's just like if you're trying to figure out how to do something, go to YouTube University. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> there's always something up there that you need. Somebody's made a video explaining it. Yep. For sure. Yeah. You can. Uh, I was watching. Uh, I watch a lot of the silly uh, shows, but like uh, AGT, there was some kid that taught himself how to do like that. The ropes and uh whatever curtain swing you know like all that dancing uh aerial oh, stuff and all that like where you have the string and like the it's like a yo-yo but it's free. Yeah, right i those mean what crazy. no no this is like with his body like uh those like curtain dancer kind oh, of things and, the and yeah okay. he, and he learned all that from youtube and started trying it in his in his backyard and now he's on AGT doing it, and it's yeah, like, I bet he's ripped. Yeah, oh yeah, he's uh, I mean, he's a little guy, but he's super strong too, and like yeah, I mean, but, you got to move your whole body and support yourself at all yeah. angles. But it's like, you know, it's just crazy. Like I, I wouldn't think that would be something you learn on YouTube, but you can. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, anyway, it's uh, so, uh, but yeah, I don't, so I think it was what was crazy is you told me that. Yeah, uh, you know, you and Chuck had talked, and then like, then to find out here, here, right in my hometown, yeah, and it's right nearby. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> like, um, but uh, you are a member of Everbloom. Yeah. Uh, which, but you guys are the band, I guess, is what Nebraska based. For the most part, I mean, about four years ago, the our singer and our drummer, and another bassist that we had kind of he left but uh my cousin just put me in touch with the singer gage and he came over and met with me and then i showed him some of the stuff i wrote played some things for him so he knew i actually knew how to play and the next week it was kind of funny because um i had like two guitars and they were both six string and they come at me and they're saying yeah, we play on seven strings, so if you get in the band, you're probably gonna have to get one of those. And so I, found, and uh, which was fine. I mean, I was so crazy about the demos he was showing me. I just knew I had to be a part of that band. So I went out the next day and got a seven string, and then we endured a couple of years of people just giving us shit about being a pop punk band playing seven strings like we're metal. All right. <laughs> but we, I mean, we get down. Yeah. We get some. We get some heavy parts for sure. But so we had that and we had the four of us all in Omaha. We lost our bassist and the guy that was doing photos for us is also a vocalist for another band in Omaha called Withered Decay. 
uh, he knows how to play bass, so he hopped in. Perfect fit. And our drummer just moved to Texas earlier this year, and I just moved out here in May. Yeah. So now we're kind of all over based, but the cornerstone is Gage. He, this band is his mind, but mind child, brain child. Yeah. Is that the I'm brain child? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> He's the real cornerstone. He kind of holds us together, keeps us productive. I mean, hell, he writes most of it. Right. I do the leads. And even then, he's I'll oftentimes will write a song, send it to me, and go, just kind of sprinkle, add the Brett touch to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I owe a lot of the last three years of whatever success we've gained, how many fun we've had. I owe, all, like, all that to Gage. Yeah. Shout out so, to Gage. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't want him to ever think that I take him for granted. <laughs> right. I, uh... I uh, I don't know. I just think that's uh, crazy. Do you think you know it's, it's, but that you you think of bands all have to kind of be in a same um, similar area, you know, practice wise and everything else or whatever. But uh, I just had friends on the show, uh, a group called Luca Brasi, uh, been kind of around St. Louis for years, but they just recently did a whole new record during the pandemic, and they did it all virtually over passing uh, recordings over the internet and yep. and uh and you listen to the album there's no, you you couldn't tell that they're not all in the same room it's like i mean you just uh i mean the way we see it we track individual anyway right. like even if if i'm sitting in gage's house next to him playing guitar it's the same as if i'm just upstairs in my room doing it as long as mm-hmm. i have equal kind of equipment right. to match what he's got but yeah, I just, I mean, that's the cr- the cool thing about now today with the modern technology and yeah, stuff, you that, and, right? So, or anywhere in the world, I mean, people collaborating with people all around the world and like, I don't know, it's really exciting to think yeah. about the possibilities and stuff. So, well, we've been talking to the singer of Brook Lane, I believe it is. I'm sure I'll get a text in a couple of weeks to <laughs> someone will correct me, but right. uh, we've been trying to get one of them to feature on one of our songs and them being from a completely different state. I mean, all we have to do is send them to the track for reference and they just record it and send it back to us. Right. It's easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah. I got a buddy who uh, just also similar story, just um, was cutting some tunes and he, uh, I don't know if he just thought of fun just to see what it was, what it message, sent a message, but uh, to uh, Brent Mason, uh, who was like a, like world renowned country guitar player he did all, like all this like great leads in uh 90s country for like joe diffie and whatever just but everybody pretty much but mm-hmm. he's been named like 14 time guitarist of the year for country music and stuff like that so he just like hit him up like hey what would you know what and he's like well here's my rate you know if you want and and i guess attached is like Benmo or whatever it was and he paid it and then uh, I got him to play lead on two songs and um so oh yeah then uh, you get to say I got this guy. sure yeah I mean and, and of course track Would right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but especially like you know everybody was sitting at home at 2020 so it's like you know a lot of those guys yeah were looking for work and even uh even the best were had a lot of free time to to do stuff like that so well there's a lot of guys um like I think the bassist I'm probably wrong about that too. Of Chunk, no Captain Chunk. <laughs> you send him big, a big, big, big Captain, no big Chunk. goal right there. Yeah. <laughs> big fan. It was somebody hurt. <laughs> love no, com- no. They love Chunk, no Captain yeah. Chunk downstairs. <laughs> um, you send him a track and fifty bucks, he'll master it for you. Right on. I mean, shit. There's service for everything. You yeah. Get features. You can get masters done yeah now i think there's a whole website dedicated to it now like uh to, you can just hire somebody to come do a feature on your track it's kind of like a consignment yeah it's like a it's like cameo except for music based kind of thing like you can just hire somebody like pay their rate and stuff and i just figured out what cameo was this year yeah i'm listening to a lot of uh, your mom's house podcast there you go and one of the guys who pretty often is a guest on their show josh potter has his own cameo where you pay him a hundred bucks and he'll just send you yeah video of his shoulder hair <laughs> him just stroking it i'm like you can just do anything on cameo uh, Fuck, i gotta make one yeah they uh i don't know i've done it um 
couple like times like my uh my wife's big on uh, that show uh, big brother she yeah. watches that and there was a guy that we liked on there that and uh i got like uh, him to cut a video her wishing her happy birthday kind of thing so made her day but it's just kind of a neat thing that like you can just hire random celebrities right. to for 20 bucks or it's whatever nuts. a ton of wrestlers do it too yeah. Oh yeah, my buddy uh, Gabe got um, the Godfather to cut an intro for his uh, for his show. Like the Godfather, like the guy who, I don't remember his yeah. name right now. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I forget his real name, but yeah, the the rest the the wrestler he also did Papa Shango and all that stuff. And uh, well, when you say the Godfather, you mean like from the movie? No, no, the wrestler. You're saying wrestling, right? Yeah, I so, didn't, I didn't know uh, there was a wrestler, the Godfather. Oh, yeah, it was like uh, '90s. Uh, he still comes around every now and then, but like he, he's like a big pimp. Like he's he always had his uh, hose that walked out to the in, in his intro and stuff. And Marlon Brando's who yeah. I was thinking. Oh of. yeah, no, not that one, not that Godfather, not, not that guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's no. from the '90s. I thought I was pretty well versed in '90s wrestling. Yeah, I think yeah, well I mean, maybe early two thousand, but either either way, like yeah, he, I mean he was a big uh, part of WWF and and hmm. stuff in in that era. Wild. So, but anyway, but yeah, I think it's just cool that you can find about almost all of the people and all these different celebrities on there now. But I met Ric Flair in an airport one time. Nice. He was not happy to talk <laughs> to me. It was just I don't know. It was bizarre. We were walking. This I was just walking down a long strip. Look to my right. And then I look away and I double take. I'm like, what's up, Mr. Ric Flair? He looks at me and goes, what's up, buddy? Because he's got that <laughs> yeah. lisp. And I was like, man, can I get a picture with you? And he goes, no, thanks. I was like, okay. Uh, will you do the woo for me? I'm not going to record it. Will you just do it? And he was like, no, thank you. And I was like, okay, man, have a good night, I guess. And I'm like, I get it. He's, he's done it sure. for 40 years or something some crazy number that he's been yeah. affiliated but i'm pretty sure i remember him saying i don't do that anymore and then i saw him on tv the next night doing the fucking woo <laughs> right i was so mad yeah i guess when he uh what's that uh he does like uh that car commercial thing now um does he do a car commercial it's uh what the hell is it is it what comp- what's the company I could see him doing it's, a caddy. It's yeah, it's like a in, insurance thing or something. Uh, oh. What the? What would you incorporate Nature Boy on insurance? Progressive, maybe they might do. I it. don't really remember <laughs> what it is now, but it's some. Uh, of, it's like a terrible commercial, but it, of course it's just Flair doing the woo and uh, his. The woo's kind of depressing anymore, right? If we're being honest, like I don't want to dog on the Nature Boy, <laughs> but. I mean, it used to be full of energy. Now it's like he's deflating. It's just like, right. Woo. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, I don't know. Like, he's still, uh, he's old. Yeah. It happens. He's still one of the greats, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's part of the thing. And now it's like, it is quite depressing to see a lot of these guys that, uh, um, you know, they've, oh, Car Shield. That's what it is. No, oh, I've never even heard of that. Car Shield. Um, that's what they, but, um, I don't know. I've I've been watching a lot of these. Like just A and E did like a whole um, uh, like biographies on a lot of these guys, uh, including um, Flair and Macho Man. Oh my god! <laughs> and sorry, uh, I, I thought it would be more yeah. quiet. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, a bunch of these guys, and it was like really um, you know some of it's some of it's fun, but also there was like a obviously a very dark side to all of it too with the there yeah so a lot of it was quite depressing to learn about some of these guys and and then like um and then to see them now like these uh I mean, they so, can barely walk yeah. they're so many of them are just like um uh, uh whatever just uh barely what they were once were and stuff which is a fraction of the man they and once were these monsters of men and stuff, but they abuse their body with drugs and steroids and everything else. And like, well, I mean, and just the regular wear and tear yeah, of wrestling, sure. I'm sure it destroys oh, yeah. your knees and back. Yep. I mean, Diamond Dallas Page, he like couldn't walk right. for a long time. Now he does a yoga thing. I mean, yoga kind of saved his mobility. Mm-hmm. And now he's got videos. They're actually, 
they're intense because mm-hmm. <laughs> my old roommate had them and i would watch him do it i didn't do it but he was sweating up a storm i was eating cheeseburger <laughs> and i was like man this looks rough yeah <laughs> but, uh, but yeah did you ever see um i think it's called the dark side of the ring no actually i mean i've heard a lot about it and i've been meaning to sit down and go through it but i I still haven't watched that one no yeah that one was on hulu yeah i watched most of that and it's pretty much the same thing i'm sure you'd see some repeats because it goes through like macho man and miss elizabeth yeah bret hart Um, yeah yeah all those guys sure yeah um but yeah that's a that's a wild world though i i was pretty big into it uh all through uh the um mid mid to late 90s and stuff and as a kid and like all through the attitude era yeah well i, I was big i actually um, me and my brother we were big on uh nitro and wcw oh, yeah. and stuff we we watched a lot more of that than the wwf side um and then uh uh i don't know i, I like i watched uh some i mean i'm asking who the people were but like uh through the attitude era and stuff like i i kind of I wasn't quite as involved in anymore at that point, but um, I'd recently, like, you know, as of, like, whatever, 10 years now, like, I started, uh, a bunch of my buddies uh, started hosting, like, a Royal Rumble party and a uh, WrestleMania party, so I, like, would stay involved uh, more uh, by going to those parties and stuff and just hang out with those guys and watch the event and eat junk food, and, you know, it was a lot of fun, but uh anyway but yeah i used to uh, it was a big part of my life man me and my brother grew up you know i was doing uh sharpshooters on them or whatever oh and, yeah you know figure four leg locks and you know, the double axe handles yeah. off the couch <laughs> right yeah uh i remember power bombing a buddy on his uh bed and broke it and his dad was real pissed off at me and God, you're lucky you didn't break him <laughs> my god <laughs> power bombs are brutal right <laughs> that's like when it's staged yeah yeah, at least uh, I mean it was on a mattress. So at least, yeah. uh, um, but yeah, man. Anyway, uh, I think we were talking about a band. I think we were t- talking yeah, about your band. Some, something. <laughs> I don't what, know. We were somewhere. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens on the show, man. That's what these things are good for, just to get to rambling about something. Uh, but yeah, you get on a tangent, sure. and see where it takes you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I kind of wanted to, before Ever Bloom. I kind of wanted to get. To, now, since we were becoming friendly and stuff, I kind of want to get to know more about you a little bit and, and your journey in music and how before you even ever bloom. Uh, and uh, and also how uh, you end up here in Wentzville to where you even connected and stuff, like which I think is a very random thing. You know, it's, it's yeah, kind of it's definitely like a random encounter. Right. It's, uh, I'm glad it happened that we could meet. But uh, what uh, what was it for you? Uh, early on that inspiring you to want to grab a guitar and i was I'm gonna be honest i don't know yeah i uh i know that when i was real young my dad had all these kiss dvds and i would watch them with all their music videos and watch like performances and stuff and just always thought it was cool and when i was like middle school maybe i think i got into drums and i was playing drums i started getting pretty good at that but then i don't know something in me was like i'm gonna try out bass so I was taking lessons. I would do half the day, well, half of the hour, I guess, half an hour on drums and then half an hour on bass, and then just worked drums out. Started doing split bass and guitar, and then guitar just kind of came naturally to me. It's just I would barely practice and then still have improvements week to week. And so then I was like, well, shit, what happens if I actually – you know, take it seriously and practice something. And I actually, I mean, I got pretty good and it was fun to see that progress. And then throughout high school, I was just trying to get into a band. I found a few guys, I guess they actually kind of found me. I remember I was walking to a gas station to get, I think I was just trying to get a peace tea, what I was drinking at the time. There you go. And I ran into those guys. I knew one of them from school and he was like, Hey, you play guitar, right? And I was like, yeah. So he invited me over, and then I was in this shitty little hardcore band, post-hardcore. We really wanted to sound like Chiodos, if you remember them. Yeah. Um, Then it just kind of progresses how it does. People lose interest, swap out a couple members, and try to beat the dead horse for a couple years. 
And then I was actually starting to lose hope out in Nebraska. I moved out to Omaha from Grand Island shortly after high school. I think it was a year after I just got out of there. And then I was just trying to find people. I'd find some friends to jam with, but nobody really wanted to take it seriously or they wanted to take it too seriously to the point where it was kind of self-destructive. Then I was starting to kind of lose hope, so I just started making beats, trying to sell them to local rappers. And then Everbloom just kind of fell into my lap, or I fell into their lap. <laughs> However right. you want to look at it, yeah. it just kind of happened. So, is that, was, uh, so you, so hardcore or post post hardcore hip hop beats. Yeah. And, and then pop, now we're into pop punk. Pop punk. Yeah. And it's funny because I don't even really listen to pop punk that much. Right. Like we always talk about it in the band how I shouldn't, again, I shouldn't enjoy writing and playing it as much as I do just because I don't really care to listen to it that much but it is incredibly fun to write and it's super fun to perform everybody's just there for a party sure well it probably gives you also a, um, uh, a fresh perspective on it you know yeah, like, i think it changes the dynamic a little bit right you're not over saturated by somebody that's grown up listening to it your entire life and everything else and like you know i, I don't know i feel like maybe it might give you to where you can put more of an originality into it and stuff and yeah you know something well and i do have love for like the classics the right. greats with like good charlotte and mcr and um i used to listen to this mexican po- pop punk band for a long time it was called chingadazo de kung fu <laughs> yeah. they're catchy man they're good but i don't know i just if you catch me driving around i'm either listening to metal or Hip hop, mm-hmm. I fucking love older hip hop or old style hip hop. I don't like the new, the newer stuff. It feels insincere in a right. way. I think is a good way to put it. Yeah, and I'm, it's, I'm like uh, I'm huge on like the like storytelling part of you know like that's what it was was uh, fun for me about like a lot of hip hop and st- you know like. There was, there was more true life kind of stuff, like, and then there was definitely that switch where, like, it became this lavish lifestyle, all the, you know, the bigger cars, big, you know, right. everything and stuff, and it was like, and where it was like that, I don't know, like, some of that's fun too, but, like, I don't know, I just always really appreciated, like, the the real MCs that were talking about, you know, what real life stuff and yeah, but like some good old Kwame and yeah, oh yeah. I mean, like all of it. Like it was, you know. But I do. I mean, I have love for Wu Tang, yeah. even though it's not like necessarily storytelling, right? But it's all like pop culture and I guess killing folk. But uh, there's this group called Zarface with Inspector Deck and L Seven. Ghostface is on a few tracks, and fuck, they're good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, I prefer hip hop over everything. mm Hmm. Yeah, what was your uh what was your first uh hip hop uh CD or or record so, that you end up picking up? That'd be a hard one to answer. Yeah. Because my dad had a bar and I when it closed down, I inherited. He just gave me all the CDs. So, fuck, I had a lot. I think the first one I was crazy about was uh Snoop Dogg. I don't remember what the CD's called right now. Is like climbing into a doghouse. Yeah. What? That's like uh, the wood with gin and juice and everything, right? Yeah. It was what, just what's, my, what's, style. what's my name? Yeah. Doggy yeah. style. Yeah, I remember I, I threw that CD in and I heard like the gin and juice and G funk intros. Oh my god. Yeah. And class. I just the bass lines. It was so groovy. It was like something I'd never heard before because like rock and roll, it's pretty straightforward. Just hit your chords and jam and i think it's just because that's what i was used to and then when hip-hop got thrown into the mix in my life i was like what is this like completely foreign style of music and they would take samples i mean that's what hip-hop was really built on was sampling disco and stuff yeah yeah 
part of my funk and on that uh yeah i mean there's a there's a lot, definitely a lot of dance and funk records that they pulled from and stuff all oh that. yeah i mean that's all hip-hop was to begin with i mean when you got run dmc and uh rapper's delight coming out that sugar was hill all, gang sugar yeah. hill yeah. gang yeah that was just straight up disco records because they had the bass line mm-hmm. that you were looking for and you just scratch them together yeah do a little mashup stuff yeah i watched uh it was a good uh documentary about hip-hop on netflix and uh i think whatever the history of hip-hop or something whatever it was mm-hmm. called i forget now but it was basically that exact uh scenario like they're talking about like how um these guys were essentially creating hip-hop what it became what it became that it was like how he was they were taking like uh those disco records and, and eventually started um creating n- new art with them and stuff like that and yeah i don't know it was pretty pretty fascinating to think about like right and it's it all just kind of came out of new york yeah. just and the craziest thing to me was that it wasn't kind of rooted in selling records or performing or anything it was basically just hanging out having a good time and giving a voice to people who didn't really necessarily have it right and it's fun to hear all those MCs from back in the day with their introduction tracks who are like what's up my name is Kwame I'm the best MC <laughs> you know <laughs> shit like that yeah. and that's all it was everybody talking about how they're the best at spitting rhymes and it was all pop culture references it was just fun yeah yeah I don't know I remember uh a reason I ask because I think mine's pretty funny and like I've talked about it in the past, but uh, the first like record I remember going out and buying like on my own um, for hip hop stuff was uh, I bought EZ's straight off the motherfucking streets of Compton, and uh, I remember my my cousin introducing me to EZ and NWA, and I was listening to a lot of that in his car, and he also introduced me to like. Pink Floyd's The Wall and some right. other some other great records and stuff and but uh, I remember something I thought was cool about Easy's voice and and stuff and it just felt like butter yeah and then <laughs> so like I was real I was big on that for a while man but like um, I don't know it was it was just strange like it was a whole different world than anything I knew about you know it was like here I am a white teenager in the middle of the you know middle america and stuff what, what do i know anything about compton and stuff like that so right it's like kind of a window into a world you'll right never really get to see and that's what I, that's what i'm saying like the stories that i like, kind of like i could you know he's essentially painting a picture of what it is like for his life every day in in his neighborhood and stuff and so it kind of gave me that you kind of hope some of that's kind of dramatized right oh yeah for <laughs> sure. it was pretty rough yeah but yeah it was uh i don't know it was I enjoyed it though, and like I still love, you know, of course, like go on and on all the names and greats and stuff. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, but hip hop's definitely always uh, had a special place in my place in my heart too. So um, I like uh, like you know, I've always been a lyrics guy. Like it's so, so again, like that's something I. But like uh, you know, a lot of groups like Atmosphere and oh, yeah. different, you know, there's people, a lot of people doing it that I think are really great at, you know, these, again, that storytelling part of it and stuff that I, it's definitely that's what, all Atmosphere is. All right. Just talking about some yeah. sad shit. Yeah, sure. But, but that's, I don't know. That's fine. What I find myself listening to more of like than anything on your radio now, like, you know, those, those kind of, you know the radio stations out here are a lot better than they are in omaha yeah I'll tell you that All right i mean i was flipping through them the first thing i did when i got into town i was like oh my god there's like nine thousand radio stations and they're all playing pretty good stuff yeah there's like five of them in nebraska <laughs> yeah and it's like three of them are country but it's like all the same so you can be like flipping across one you hear the song on one station you go to the next one you're probably going to hear it again <laughs> right and then there's just like a classic rock and 80s, 90s, and today. Yeah. Weird. Right. Yeah. That's what's nice about uh, having Spotify or having uh, satellite radio and stuff. I can, You can dial in and write, a, write what you want and stuff. And you know, Spot- I've been fucking up on Spotify lately. I haven't. I used to use it to find new artists all the time, but lately I've just been going back to 
same old stuff old, I've been old, yeah old familiar favorites yeah not yeah. really branching out much like i should i go through uh, phases like that or sometimes where i'm like and the, the show helps me continue like i mean this week getting to learn ever bloom and stuff but right like, but uh you know like there's a lot of times where i i also am that way i like i like a lot of 90s uh pop stuff <laughs> like i listen to a lot of 90s on nine and my and on satellite and uh just I don't know, cheesy and fun and stuff, but it's your Sugar Ray yeah. and Third Eye oh, Blind yeah, kicks. <laughs> yeah, so do you know Sugar Ray? I don't know how much you've looked into them, but they are so much more than every morning. Oh yeah, well they they started off hardcore. Like yeah. the, they were real heavy for the before that whole first record, ninety ninety miles per hour. I think it was called. Yeah, uh, with, with Fly on it. Uh, that was like all like real heavy. Well, it was so weird because I I got the CD and I popped it into my CD player thinking I'm just because it had Fly and yeah. had all their hits like Wake Up. Is it Wake Up? Uh, every morning. That's on the next one. I don't know. There's, an, there's another one yeah. that's similar to Wake Up or something like that. But yeah. anyways, the CD starts with their song RPM and I was like looking at the CD, like the cover, and I took the CD out to make sure it was the right one put it back in and i was like what the fuck am i listening to this isn't sugar yeah, right? right then it goes straight into every morning yeah from that intense hardcore song and i was like what is going on well they it seemed like they I, and I think there was i talked about it in the past too but like they they did fly and fly was like the runaway hit like every, you right. know, everybody knew that song and then they were like okay we'll just do that and like basically We'll sell out. We don't care. Like you know. Yeah, they they made the songs they knew they would get famous and, for. And then they, I think they named the next record, um, fourteen fifty nine. You fi- know what? That's the one I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, their their fifteen minutes of fame was was almost yeah. up. So they, that's the one with every morning and all the other big hits after that and stuff. But yeah. uh, anyway, it just I I think it's uh, I don't know. I'm Mark Mark McGrath is actually like. I feel like one of the cooler guys like he's he's a host on on 90s on nine and then like i've tweeted at him and he goes he always says tweet at him and that's so i do and then he's he's wrote back and stuff like he's um and it seems very genuine that it's actually him not like somebody running it for him or something like that and right uh i well, don't know and- i said i think one day i wrote like something you know kind of goofing like that i went to the uh went to the grocery store and heard fly on the radio or something like that and you know and tweeted at him and then he uh he, i don't know he just he said thanks brother shane or something like that whatever it was but it just uh made me laugh i was like that's where you go to hear sugar rays at the grocery well, store 11 yeah <laughs> all right well and it's they're like the perfect example of a nice happy medium of selling out and doing your own thing all right and i think they partially did it because they were like i know some people are gonna listen to fly and buy our cd so let's put the first track something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Just to really mess with them. Well, I remember there was one on there. It was like cash. I think it was like, and that's basically all I remember the lyrics was, I need some fucking cash. I need some fucking cash. <laughs> it was yeah. like, and I was just like, and then of course, then you know, the next one's fly yeah. or whatever. So it's like, yeah. They're like Mean Machine and yeah. RPM. They were weird. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that was like all that new. They were right there in that whole like new metal thing with. Yeah. And then they kind of changed to pop and started making that. So, but I wonder if without them, if some forty one would have had the success that they had, right? With their first CD being kind of thrash punky, but also kind of surfy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a similar first CD, right? If you really look at it. Yeah. Plus they had that cool rap in there, all right? Rock what we're all about. <laughs> I used to know all the words to that. <laughs> all right. So goofy. It is uh, funny to like what those things that stick with you. Like uh, speaking of new metal, my buddy, we were talking about Limp Biscuit the other day because uh, Fred Durst, crazy uh, hair and uh, glasses and everything and Lollapalooza and stuff. And Yeah, he did not look like Fred yeah, Durst. Right. Yeah, he looks like somebody's grandpa now and stuff. And Right. He really grew up. Is what it <laughs> right. <laughs> what he, uh, I think it, it, uh, he looks just like uh, the Beastie Boys in that Sabotage video. Like he looks yeah. like a, some kind of fake de- you know, detective and stuff now. Like, <laughs> like he's uh, in witness protection. Right. Popping out to do a show real quick. <laughs> yeah. Going right back in. But 
uh, Jason mentioned uh, stuck, and I was like, man, I haven't heard that. Enough. But I immediately went right back to it. You know, psycho female blowing up the phone line. And I was like, how, how, why do I know that still? Why are those lyrics still, you know? Just like, burn into your brain. Right. I that's, should. That's all that's up there. But, it, like, I, I forget math and everything else. I, but I, if you ask me about 1997 lyrics from Limp Bizkit, I'll, you know. Well, my mom, growing up, we would have this four-hour drive to see my grandparents. And she had two CDs. She had Abba Gold. Abba's Classic. greatest hits, and then the Mamma Mia soundtrack, which, if you don't know, is mostly Abba. Right, that's all you need, man. <laughs> it was insane. Like, how can you listen to those same songs <laughs> for four hours straight? But we did it. If I have to hear Dancing Queen one more time, yeah. And then it became like I was, I would hate Abba, and then I would get drunk and love Abba, and now I've just given in. I love Abba. Right. Yeah. <laughs> listen to him any day of the week. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some of that's like yeah, it's just ingrained in you now. Like you, you know, yeah. they're catchy songs. They make good stuff for sure. Yeah. Really good Swedish breakout band. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, I like. Uh, I don't know. I'm for whatever reason, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a lot of that stuff. But um, Ace of Base and uh, and Roxette and like I don't know Swedish Swedish pop tunes like are are fun to me. So there's a really good Swedish pop punk band that's around called Abandoned by Bears. Yeah, we ended up playing a show with them, and I don't know if it's a coincidence because they were over in Omaha. We played a show. They stayed at my house overnight so they could shower and have a real meal. And right at the end of that tour, we started getting a lot of traction in Sweden. Now I don't know if it's because we made a good impression, <laughs> yeah, or what. But if it is, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> but that was weird to see that we had like 80 people every day listening to us in Sweden. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that feels, that's got to feel good. And let, you know, getting some uh, global exposure. Well, let's talk about, we've, uh, we've been talking a lot, but we haven't really get into the band yet, but, uh, you guys, uh, uh, just recently put out, um, we put out two new singles so far this year and, Right in 2021? Uh, uh, yeah, one of them thought out was like right at the end of last year. Okay. I want to say. Right. We'll start with thought out then. That's So that's uh, 2020? Yes. Yeah. What's uh, anything come no, to mind? Yeah, it was 2020. I was reading it wrong. And then uh, anything come to mind around thought out you want to share with us today? Um, I didn't really write the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was a fun song to write. I helped out with the leads. Like I said, Gage kind of takes over most of the songwriting, but I right. had a couple. It was m- mostly about just a rough breakup, just kind of leading up to it. So I act, I had a couple lines toward the end that I contributed.
situation get the best of me No matter what you say to me All those words are stuck in my head But yeah, your classic pop punk, sad boy stuff. Yeah. But this is a fun song. I love playing it live the couple times we got to. Yeah, man. So I guess, uh, you know, just like everybody, you guys got shut down and uh, for 2021. And then, so, but you did get, uh, I guess, were you guys ri- just busy writing when you could? Yeah, we uh, we've, were kind of working on, I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything or if I don't think it matters so much, but... We are working on new music. We have a new mm-hmm. single that we're hoping to get out by the end of the year. And then maybe next year, get the work our way, a couple more singles to tease you for a new six song EP we're working on. Right on. So, yeah. I, th- I did find it funny. I was, uh, so I was, I was um, like I said, this was my first like introduction into the band and everything, mm-hmm. getting dive through your guys' catalog out there, and and um, and then I started uh, listening to uh, Talking Through Teeth, and uh, I I just thought it was funny that you guys in the song with this is going to be our year, uh, yeah, and then COVID, yeah, and that's then- cool, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just like man that what a what a, that didn't uh, did not pan out so well for uh uh you know like not uh not that the band couldn't do it but just like it uh has been nobody's year even 20 yeah. 21 is not uh really uh and now we got the delta variant and everything else going on and, uh it's a uh, weird yeah. times out there still man so yeah and that was supposed to be kind of uh i'm not very not having a good day for articulation uh that was kind of supposed to be our kind of commentary on the social environment right. that was around at the time with the whole George Floyd and the protests. Mm-hmm. Not that our, not really that our narration on it really put anything to it because we are four white guys from middle America, not really experiencing those things, but I felt like we would have done kind of a disservice, not really show support in any way, but um, kind of on a lighter note, I didn't expect group vocals to be so rough to record. Yeah. Until we did that song. It was just me and Gage and our drummer Grant sitting in a small room shouting at a microphone in different parts of the room. So we, we I think we yelled, hey, a total of like 32 times <laughs> in a row. And, that's, and then we just put a reverb on it and then that's the group vocals. Yeah. You know, you hear them growing up in those head in those metal bands like We Came as Romans. They were real big on the group gang vocals and set your goals. And you're like, that sounds so cool. I want to do it. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. The, the throat ache was worth it. Yeah. To get the nice sounding woes in there in the chorus.
obviously those are always fun to have on the record, but then also to perform live, having the kind of the sing along with the crowd and stuff, getting yeah. the, the participation and stuff. And well, it's like I mean, every every band's got to have at least one song where you got that. Yeah. It's like no effects with their oi oi oi's. You know, you got to have something to, for the crowd to shout back at you, right? But we didn't know we already kind of had that with three a.m. That kind of was the song everybody loves and so every time we played a show in omaha it would be like the whole room erupting everybody screaming those words back at us and that's a big moment yeah <laughs> to have that happen the first time you're like holy shit to hear everybody over the drums and guitars and everything yeah yeah i can't imagine and that, that'd be uh definitely gotta be uh make you feel good like just to i know see. i almost forgot how to play the song i was so taken back yeah yeah something you know you guys created in the basement and all of a sudden a room full of strangers you know whatever singing these words back to you and stuff and yeah if you always have that hope that it resonates in somebody well enough that they don't care what they look like in a public setting to shout right lyrics back at you but you never really you always hope for it but when it happens you don't really expect it so or at least right. i didn't right um well you uh you can find ever bloom on your uh facebook and instagram and you can uh, find the music uh digitally everywhere you get your digital music so yeah uh, even on title if you're on oh, that shit. Kicking for Rex whatever hands. reason that you would be on title yeah. <laughs> we're there uh yeah i don't know like i don't know all the details about it i guess they some people i think they somebody claims that they have like a higher quality sometimes um bit rates or something like that or so, I, don't know. I mean it's jay-z's thing yeah he would he didn't want to lose money on spotify right so he wanted you to pay his label but, i think if i remember right i think that's how it went and they did advertise a higher bit rate right but at some point you just don't really notice sure. the difference yeah especially some of the stuff people i mean I mean, if you're listening through your phone speakers anyway, you're you're not gonna pick yeah. it up and. Well, and it's only as good as it's how it's recorded. And right. I, I don't think a lot of people realize how easy it is to get on Spotify. Right. Oh yeah. If you got ten bucks for a year to spend on Distro Kid. Sure. You're there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but, so check out uh, Ever Bloom, and hopefully we'll uh, get some. There might be uh, potentially some things happening hopefully we'll get you guys on a stage sometime soon and uh that'd be nice. so it'll be uh yeah it'll be fun man I- <laughs> mike scored a goal yeah. i think <laughs> uh let's talk about uh one more new this is the uh, latest and you said this is uh was a lot of uh gauges work but this was uh a cover of uh what we said 24 karat gold golden uh, yeah, 24K Golden. Yeah, 24K Golden. He's a rapper. Yeah, this song called Mood. Why are you always in a mood? Fucking around, that's a brand new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do. Don't try to play cool. Baby, I ain't playing by your rules. Everything looks better with a view. Why are you always in a mood? Fucking around, that's a brand new. Girl, it's obvious, elephant in the room And we're a part of it, don't act so confused 
And, um, but, uh, this was for a compilation you guys were invited to be a part of. Yeah. So there's ghost killer entertainment. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Um, I don't know about that, but I, I've, I've, I've been familiar with some of the different, uh, pop goes, uh, yeah, Com- compilation things, but and well, like, and that's mostly Fearless Records doing those, right? Um, but Ghost Killer, up until either this year or 2020, sometime, uh, they were just basically a marketing company. Okay, I think is I don't know exactly how you would put it, but you would you would approach them and ask them to put feature like your new music video on their YouTube. Okay, and they have a huge following. There's a couple youtube productions like that um but then pretty recently they started a label i don't really know details on how that's going but they since we've been on their website before and on their youtube they came at us asking if we wanted to be a part of the new you know punk goes hardcore was the compilation they were working on so it's supposed to be kind of like punk goes pop Mm-hmm. And yeah, we just uh, selected mood yeah. to be for that. If I remember right, yeah, it's. And if you want to find that, you can find that on, you know, same place everywhere you get your music or on Ghost Killer Entertainment. You can find all those covers. Devil in the Details, also from Nebraska, is a part of that. Uh, and if you like, you know, We Were Giants, stuff like that. Yeah. You find all your favorite bands probably had a cover for it. Nice. Yeah, I always wanted to do uh something like that. Like um we we used to uh, locally, I mean and I'm sure there's a bunch of them uh, you know, wherever you're from, but here we had uh one oh five seven the point was our is our big rock station and Oh yeah. And they would do uh point essentials and they would do like these there's just a compilation of you know whatever you know 12 song 15 songs uh and then mostly get those the early ones always were uh locals and uh for the most part you know a lot of great locals were featured on there and, or just whatever the some of the you know regional acts and things but um they uh so anyway i started collecting those and like oh those were always i felt really cool like just some a compilation like that and and i, I kind of wanted to do something like that with the show featuring some friends and and uh i don't know it was like uh by that point you know cds had already kind of fizzled and then things like that they couldn't justify the cost of right. putting it together so i just started making a big old spotify playlist of all That's of it what but, i was about to say yeah. maybe just make a playlist and, and advertise it but i just remember like you know it's those compilations were always just cool and like i mean it's cool to, that people are still doing something you know putting these together but like it was a good way to, you know, if I'm a fan of Everbloom and I check this out, maybe you potentially discover 10 other ba- bands that I really like too and stuff. So Yeah, there was a Midwest thing. Let's see if I can find that. My old band was a part of one in like the Tri-City, like Grand Island, Hastings, Kearney, Nebraska. And there was just a bunch of Nebraska bands mm-hmm. on it. I don't remember what it was called. Yeah. But it's not super important because most of those bands are not really a thing anymore. Right. That's kind of what's cool about those Point Essentials, though, too, is like most of those bands are long gone. So it's like it's just kind of nice that and some of the stuff was only released on there. So or something like that. Sometimes some, you know, exclusive songs and stuff. So, you know, it's kind of nice to have it as like a. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever be able to find this compilation again because yeah. all the normal places I look, it's not showing right. up. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. to get on Napster, LimeWire, or something. So yeah, LimeWire, you'll find <laughs> you'll find all the best things, <laughs> like um, Bill Clinton's "I Did Not Have Sexual Relations" speech. <laughs> right. I got that all the time. I try to download a song, and that's all it was. Oh yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> Yeah, those, yeah, those, those were the days. Yeah, you know, for sure, man. Those were the days. Uh, what? Um, yeah, it's got. I'm never gonna. I don't know if I'll be able to find that ever again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? So, um, so you're here mainly for, for 
for work, right? That's why you moved to this area? Well, I found myself in kind of a unique situation where I had money saved up to move to another place, but that fell through. And then my roommates bought a house and basically said, you know, figured out. Um, and I got friends out here that I'd only really seen a couple times a decade. And they were like, why don't you just move out here? Like, we play video games together all the time. And then my buddy Mike, who's downstairs having just a great <laughs> night in Rocket League, it sounds like. Uh, he's like, you just come stay with me however long you need to. And then as soon as I got out here, I took a job traveling, renovating U.S. cellular stores. So I it, it's counterintuitive in a way because I haven't seen these guys much. But cool because the pay is nice and yeah. i get to travel around so right are you but uh so do you think you'll find yourself getting involved uh musically here in st louis like bringing the band around here or you guys yeah, think i'd you're... like to try to get them out here to play a couple shows yeah yeah that'd be could be cool uh we got a pretty uh strong music scene and uh, of course uh I feel like St. Louis is like, I mean, of course, I don't really know truly what to compare it to because I've never been to the other ones, but like, I feel like we're really like bubbling under, like we have a lot of great music venues that opened up recently too. So like just to contribute to it even more so we can bring uh, other national acts in and keep uh, growing more exposure to everybody across the board, you know, get more people out going to live music again and stuff. And right. And, uh, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of good, good stuff coming out of St. Louis right now. And I just, I don't know. There's so much of it I listen to that I love that I'm like, I don't know why this is not, you know, more well celebrated. Well, it's, there's like a weird stigma surrounding St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Like everybody knows that the music scene out here is good and they want to come play the shows. But also, there's a high rate of trailers that get stolen mm -hmm. outside of venues. And nobody really ever says what venue. So you can't really pinpoint it <laughs> as a guy who doesn't, who isn't from here. Right. And so we were always like, oh, I don't know about St. Louis because we don't know where to go. Right. But maybe now that I live here, I can scout out the sketchy places. Yeah, that's definitely been the case. Like, I know that like, was an issue. I, I feel like, uh, I mean, not to say it doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, I feel like things have gotten better. Uh, yeah. So, um, but, yeah, I don't know. It, there's definitely was a, like a, like a crew, I guess, that were, like, targeting venues. Or, I don't know. Great money-making scheme. But, I, but, I, making but I, think, I think they finally got, people got caught and are in jail for it all now, so. Nice. Um, but, yeah. Anyway. So I feel like we've finally gotten past that, but I, but as you're saying, like we're still, that's our reputation and so, right. you know, it's like, so it's going to be a long time before that really right. fixes just because of how things and people are. Yeah. What but, do you, th what do you, I was going to say, well, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, but we actually have a place to stay now. If right. They do come out here and play, which is already half of the battle. Yeah. Is you come out here and you're like, I'm already on edge because I'm afraid my trailer is going to get taken. And now I don't know where I'm going to sleep in my in the van where it's, you know, where's a good place to sleep where you're not going to get messed with. Oh, shit, this house right here. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I was going to ask, what's, uh, like, the biggest um, misconception you think you've uh, found moving to St. Louis now? Like, what is something that you, you heard about St. Louis that is not well, true besides the, that part? I don't know. I've never, yeah. I've, I still haven't gone into the city. Okay. I've I've pretty much been. I think the closest I got was Bridgeton when I went to go check out that guitar center. Right, but I don't know. It's not like all my family when I said I was or, moving out here. Or were, maybe maybe, yeah, maybe we can just say the uh, in Missouri instead of St. Louis. But I don't know. Everybody says it's God's country out here. Yeah, and it's pretty. I mean, it's it is pretty beautiful. Yeah, we well, got a little bit of everything. I mean, there's definitely some some nice uh, lakes and. You know, there's, you get a little, there's, if you're into like nature stuff for sure, like there's a lot to, lot to see. So I, know, I need to go check out the Ozarks. Yeah. I don't know. Yo, like Ozarks is cool. Like there's a lot of area around there that's like, but like, 
you know, it just, uh, well, I'm more focused on like the mountains. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's like outside, outside of the lake with like, I don't know, man, it gets so crazy down there. Like, uh, like it's fun, but it's just too much sometimes. Like, yeah, it's just, uh, well, and I don't know if you've seen the show Ozark with Jason Bateman. (laughs) Right. Great show. Some of that has to be a little bit true for them to make a TV show about yeah. crime in the Ozarks. Like, I know it's probably not, like, narcos kind of stuff happening in there, but there is some Hoosiers, I bet, that are locals. Oh, yeah. I bet, there, yeah, there's got to be something that uh, to help inspire uh, some of the ideas, uh, for sure. That is a new word I learned. Like, I knew the word Hoosier <laughs> before moving here, but I never heard it said as yeah. often as I do now. And it makes, it's a great word. Right. It's a great descriptor. <laughs> like, there's... I think there is a distinct difference between rednecks and Hoosiers. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know exactly uh, how you, you know, define them, but I mean, there's definitely a difference between the two, you know, so. Well, uh, I guess this really only makes sense if you watched a lot of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> and a lot of Adam Sandler movies, but I think... <laughs> O'Doyles are like rednecks, whereas McPoyles are would be like Hoosiers. Yeah. They're not really they're weird, but in a way that could be like country and could not be. It's just really trashy. All right. <laughs> I'm sure they drink a lot of warm milk. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Doyle's rule. Um <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh I don't know, man, but yeah, it'd be cool, like I was saying, to, to get the band down here and throw a St. Louis stop and stuff, and uh, and then uh, uh, hopefully I can introduce you to a bunch of my friends uh, around the community and stuff, and make yeah, that some, would be make, awesome. Do some do some networking that way and stuff, collaborating and make some cool shows happen. Well, what's nice is because of the way we are, um, or like the way our music is, we can match up with just like a straight punk or pop punk or even metal Mm -hmm. bills like in omaha that's like mostly what it is is hardcore stuff and because we have those heavier segments uh, we still kind of sit pretty well with them i just don't like how often we get um compared to a day to remember oh yeah (laughs) i'm Uh, over those guys yeah yeah i try um you know it happens but i try to avoid comparing people like just i mean somebody was like somebody told us we sound a lot like set your goals and i was like yeah love those guys right so i mean it is all really subjective and i could see why people would say we sound like a day to remember but i think maybe it's just my point in my life when i listen to them a lot i kind of look back at myself and cringe (laughs) and so i'm like fuck a day to remember (laughs) I don't want to be associated with that. All right. 2012 Brett was a weird guy. <laughs> so. uh, all right. I've been um, asking some of these uh, random questions, and I uh, feel uh, if you want to entertain some of these for me. Oh, of course. What uh, What would be a dream duet or collaboration for you, uh, or maybe uh, for the band? Who would you, somebody you'd like to? collaborate with maybe i think in this fantasy world if uh like four years strong or the main if either of those guys hit us up and was like you want to do a collab like a split i would probably cry because yeah. <laughs> i do love those two bands yeah with all my heart well, so yeah i guess four years strong or the main would be my dream collab yeah well are you listening Listening for you strong. Yeah, figure it out, dude. Yeah, what's up? Let's make it happen. Uh, do you do any celebrity impressions? <laughs> no, not really. No. I don't do any impressions, but I, I, I'm definitely like I'm better at like probably mimicking like, especially like cartoon voices or different things like that. And like, um, sometimes that like, but I, I don't, I'm not one of those guys. Like I watched, uh, I'm. Uh, a podcast I like to listen to a lot is uh, about last night. It was actually one, kind of a big influence for me, even wanting to do this thing. But um, 
Adam Ray and Brad Williams used to do the show together, two comedians, usually talking to a third comedian. Uh, Brad stepped away now that he's a dad and Adam's been doing it by himself, but he has a lot of great guests on and and just had Jay Farrow from SNL fame and all the stuff. Oh, okay. and, and those guys both uh, are great and impressionist and stuff. And like, so uh, I think uh, Jay was, I think he was doing, I think he was doing his Jay-Z voice at the time and uh-huh. and then he and he was uh or no it was will smith now it, it was will is will smith one and uh and adam started doing uh robert downey jr and like so it sounded those the guys were just so spot on with those impressions and like and going back and forth and like i don't know like it it's really really good to well and it's crazy when you see someone who's good at impressions operate because it's not just making your voice sound like theirs. It's like stepping into their mannerisms. Oh, yeah. And so you, when you watch them, they almost change their face, too, to kind of... Uh, sure. They, like, form it to look like them a little bit. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's something, yeah, I've never really tried to do yeah. that well. I I mean, like I said, I can like I can do, like, movie quote kind of thing. I can do the line, but... And, right. I, and I can mimic that voice or a song lyric sometimes or whatever it is, but like, I can't stay in that character to continually right. improv or anything else. And that's basically make up yeah. a whole string of sentences that they, you've never heard them say, but right. it still sounds just like them. Yeah. And those guys are really good at it for sure. So, yeah. um, what about a uh, movie or TV show you wish you were in? Is there a certain world you would think like, man, that'd be cool to be part of that. Um, I don't know. That'd be a hard one, I guess. Yeah. Trailer Park Boys would be fun. Yeah. I think I'd be a fun character on there. Even if I was just doing what uh, Tom Arnold and Snoop Dogg, just like as a weird cameo. <laughs> right. He's in like four episodes, but. That's all I want. I don't even need four episodes. I just want to have like one line, like in a show or movie just like or something. Just a gas station clerk. Yeah. Or like a waiter bring a. Uh, whatever or i don't know whatever it is just something where i walk in and one line and i'm out and i'm like then i'll be i feel like i made it like that's like yeah. my, my bucket list thing is like and then everybody who brings up that show you're right. like you know i was in that <laughs> yeah one right. time yeah check it out three seconds yep three seconds more than and you and that's me right there <laughs> like did you see that like uh yeah no i don't know like i just think that'd be super fun to be like a little cameo spot like that and like i bet i could do a pretty good zombie on the walking dead yeah all right <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a definitely another one that would be like you know there's just um yeah, ma- just, massive amount of people. Yeah, you just see a horde and you're like, see that guy right, right. there, the eyeball that's down here. That no, 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 the other one, the other one, <laughs> yeah. must, the one with four teeth, not six. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> what's your strangest fear? Strangest fear, or just uh, maybe I don't like sticky great, things. I yeah. Don't know. Like, like those weird goo ball things for that kids play with. I hate them. I don't like the texture. <laughs> those like quarter quarter machine kind of things, like with the sticky hand, like a yeah, or like silly, like the right. stuff that's kind of like silly putty, like the fart jar that you would stuff your thumb in, and it would make a fart sound. <laughs> fart jar. And it was that's like a great band really name. Slimy, yeah, right. <laughs> the fistful assholes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know. I just so it's not really a fear. It just grosses me out. I guess uh, touching gooey things, right? Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, there's a lot of that. Like, I'd rather not, rather not have uh, on me or whatever. I used to have this weird fear that somebody was always kind of like a hitman after me. Kind of like in the Pink Panther, I was always looking over his shoulder. I was always like, man, I think that guy's probably trying to kill me. <laughs> And I didn't even do like any drugs. I don't know where that paranoia came from. Yeah. But every time somebody looked at me for a little bit more than three seconds, I'd be like, he's after me. And that's it. They, they found me. Like, I got to move. <laughs> they found Jason Bourne. They're, they're on to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, you said something in text uh, before we got rolling today uh that uh, you uh actually did a podcast uh about movies for a while or you yeah. started it i've got like six episodes i still need to release but they're on my computer but we yeah. have i think six out uh, it was called the academy of trash 
where we would talk about just some of the worst movies you've ever seen. No. Uh, kind of explore why they're so bad. Now each episode was in one movie or? Yep. We would. Um, there it is. We would play the movie, me and my co-host Kennedy. We would watch it and we'd hear it in our headphones, but you wouldn't hear it. So you'd almost have to, we would queue up. We'd be like, all right, and we're starting the movie now. <laughs> right. And you would just kind of ideally watch it and listen along with us for commentary. Kind of like how, uh, oh God, Mystery Science Theater was. Oh, yeah. But not quite as funny. We're just not as funny as they are. Right. We had one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six episodes on Spotify and then probably another five or six on my computer I need to still edit and yeah. do. Life got weird. She was going to move to Philly and then I was going to move to Philly also because I just wanted to get out of Nebraska and the podcast was fun to do. Yeah. Uh, and then that kind of fell through on my end. So so what movies have you, uh, what, what's your like favorite moment uh, so far on the show what, or what's the worst best worst movie that you uh you guys have talked about well and the best thing about it is most of these movies really aren't that bad when you look past it because most of them are a victim of budgeting so the first movie we did was samurai cop with a budget of like less than sixteen thousand dollars which is insane when you think about the marvel movies having like almost a billion dollar budget right and they still made a pretty fun action movie um then you have you got your movies like your Evil Dead's where, I mean John Carpenter came out and said like we wanted to do more but it was the eighties man yeah can't so then they did the remake that was really good. But I think my favorite two movies are tied because Slumber Party Massacre was just really interesting to dive into and talk about, and Elves, the Christmas movie which leads you to believe that there's going to be an army of elves. Just one, <laughs> just one terrorizing this little town Yeah, with a uh, John Haggerty or Dan, Dan, Dan Haggerty. That's what it was. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of that actor. Big dude. He looks like, um, he looks like the lumberjack from just wrestling. Okay. Was it lumberjack? Yeah, I think it was. I don't know. He's a big dude, but, I don't know, the Elves episode, episode four, yeah. easily the funniest one out of the six up because we just roast this little elf. Kennedy has a weird attraction. Dan Haggerty, yeah. still be on me today. <laughs> I, I don't know, it was crazy. It's, it's a fun podcast. If you want a little silly thing and sure. have like three hours to kill because that's about how long each episode is, All right. check it out. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh so is that, I mean, I guess the movie, bad movies always been a, was a passion before the podcast or what? Are oh we, yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the best stories are told sure. in them. <laughs> yeah. I never like, I mean, there's, de I've definitely watched uh, a ton of, I mean, there's a, especially horror movies. Like there's, there, there's no shortage of yeah. so bad. It's good. horror yeah. Movies. Right. I remember, uh, I remember something, I don't know. I don't know if I ever actually watched it, but I remember what reason it popped in my head now thinking about it, but talking about these movies. But uh, my buddy, uh, Jeremy, he's, still, he's a huge uh, horror movie, like ter B horror movie uh, fan. And, uh, and he was telling me about some goofy movie that he watched uh, and he used to talk, like quote it, but it was like, um, and I guess it was I don't know. It was like where you just yell, it's like, I'm, it's Bruce Willis time or something like that. And like, it was like this, like, I don't know, gremlins kind type of, of like type of thing trolls. or trolls. Maybe. Yeah. I think it was, maybe it was trolls. Trolls too is like yeah. an infamous, right. Bad movie. Maybe that's the, no. Yeah. There's, I remember I could think of it as like little, I'm not like, uh, so yeah, trolls would probably be, uh, make sense. Yeah. So that or yeah. the leprechaun, I think. Yeah. But uh, he said he was like in a like a little like remote control race car kind of thing or something like that and or so I don't remember exactly all the details obviously but it was just always <laughs> stuck with me like just thinking of what a funny it's line Bruce that Willis is time. yeah what a silly line that is like well I think the first line of 
Thanks Killing, where there's a turkey yeah. that's a serial killer. Oh, yeah. Which, that was a student project, which is funny <laughs> that it became the cult classic that it did, because it had like a $600 budget or something crazy low. Right. But... The first line in that, I think, is just nice tits, bitch. <laughs> right. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And like then, it opens up with a pioneer woman running through a field. So, and then she falls down and, you know, boobs so, are revealed. Setting the bar real high right there. <laughs> yeah. And the turkey kills her. And that's what he says right before he does it. It's super bizarre, the whole movie. Uh, <laughs> and it never stops. Like it's at 100 yeah. the whole way through. I think that was the movie that I think it's like two hours. That episode is like two hours of silence because we're both just watching the movie like, oh, my God, jaws on the floor. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at one point, the turkey has sex with somebody, with a human. Right. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Got to give the people what they want, man. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that's what someone wanted, but I guess not to kink shame, but there's a lot out there. You know what this movie's been missing, right? It needs <laughs> need this turkey to really just get his rocks off. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's some of that stuff. Like, there's just so much corny, weird. You know, I mean, it's all been out there. That's what I think. That's what makes it so difficult to have like a great horror movie today because like so much of it's already been done it's like hard to find yeah something unique to where like you know it's our own thing but well that's why i loved uh the sinister series when that came out because i mean as far as i'd seen at the time there was no other stories like it and it was just really cool and i think that might have been the start of really having good well-told stories about like old weird pagan deities Cause now there's like hereditary with, I think it was Paimon, but that movie chilled me to the core. I think that was the only film I've ever seen in theaters where I was actually on the edge of my seat Yeah, and really unsettled. Yeah. I think I remember watching the trailer and I'm like, nope, fuck that. And like, I remember like, there's a couple, there's a, there's definitely like, yeah, there are, I guess I should retract my previous statement. There are some that are doing well like that. But there are like a lot of them that just are not. Yeah. But, uh, it's really easy to f- make a flop. Yeah. But it's like, uh, there's been a few, like, uh, um, you know, Conjurings and stuff. Those are yeah. those are pretty solid. Uh, yeah, that whole series, that's yeah. bigger than I thought it was. I just stopped paying attention for a while. And then all of a sudden they've got like, Annabelle's a part of it. They did like a remake of the Amityville house. Mm-hmm. I guess that's in the universe. Yeah. Weird. But Hereditary was so scary to me because most of these horror movies you see, like, you kind of have a score to kind of keep that barrier of it being real and not real. Because you hear the music, you know, you have the killer moving, you know, you know it's a movie. But when you're in, a like, a theater watching Hereditary where it's so quiet, like, there are scenes where it's just horrific things happening but there's no music driving it Mm -hmm. so you almost if you're able to get into the movie it almost feels like you're there and it's a goddamn terrifying place to be yeah yeah um i felt a little bit of that with like uh a quiet place like yeah you know just the it was exciting to be in a theater watching it because because it was so quiet that was you know it built the suspense even more so and yeah and you get those sensory deals where right. you know you have the surround sound right which really helps with immersion but that one i thought was uh a, a definitely a fun one to experience in a theater with a group room full of people and stuff because everybody was just kind of like you know yeah there's like seven the whole lines th- in the whole movie right in there. yeah so for yeah for a silent movie for the most part like it was it was did a good job of like creating a a suspense and and stuff so seems like the second one's gonna have a lot more to it Mm -hmm. i mean script wise right yeah i liked it i mean i thought i I watched in theaters also and i thought they did a good job with it yeah john krasinski really broke out of the office with that one Mm -hmm. yeah talented guy yeah um but yeah yeah it's kind of a um 
uh, I don't know. The, I like too that the the ending of it is vague enough to where you can kind of apply your own mm. uh, to. Sometimes I kind of like that, like where I can, you know, you can make your you can fill in the your own ending kind of thing too. So yeah, where it kind of ends ambiguously, right? They don't really, yeah, they don't spell it out completely. Like oh the. You know, that's all. It's open enough to a third one if they wanted to, but also it could end just right there, and that's fine too. So, uh, you know, that kind of thing, like, which is was good writing. I feel like just letting the people. I think sometimes your your own imagination uh, fill in the blanks better sometimes than if they were to go and do a third movie to, or something like that. Or yeah, I don't really like it when they know. spoon feed you the plot. Yeah, sure. Some and sometimes. Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want it to be completely filled in. Like, it's like, oh, here's the, you know, up oh, the killer's dead at the end of the movie and, then, you know, credit roll credits and stuff kind of thing. But, well, shit, just like books, you know, the movie is really only as good as it, how it ends. Right. So if you can do a tasteful, kind of figure it out yourself kind of deal, mm-hmm. the good ones really leave clues in there so you can kind of figure it out. Right. Like, you see all these foreshadowings and you're like, oh, he's, He's probably dead. Yeah. But. Yeah. But it was fun. It was still, both of them are a good time at the theater. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll sit down and watch Hereditary one of these days. But It's a pretty, pretty rough movie. Yeah. It scared the shit out of me just watching the trailer and stuff. <laughs> like, so I'm, cause I'm not like real big on uh, a lot of horror movies and stuff or, or mostly most, most of the stuff I watch is comedy. You know, that's just, that's where my taste is at for the most part. Well, the whole time you watch it, you think it's a kind of a violent mental illness that you're dealing with, and then it makes a flip about halfway through to like a an occult kind of deal, mm-hmm. and then it kind of gets back into that fantasy realm of horror, but uh, they do it in such a tender way that you know, kind of, I don't know, it didn't really affect a lot of people as much as it affected me, I have found, but it scared the shit out of me. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people are like that movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. Sure, but I mean that's again, so many of it's the same with music. Yeah, it's Every, all it's all subjective. It's every yeah. everybody can have their own. Like there's there's things that move me way different than anybody. Else. You know, it's like just you connect to what certain things. Sometimes uh, it all depends on uh, you know. S- certain life experiences or whatever combination of events that led you to that, where you like experience it differently than somebody else. And then, and I don't know, I've even felt like there's definitely been times where movies or music also like where I wasn't ready for it. And then I've gone gone back to visit it 10 years later or something like that. And it hits me completely different than I'm like, Oh, now I get it. Like it's all makes sense now and stuff. So because of stuff like that, I've been trying to uh, get myself off of, the phrasing like oh that sucks right it's not bad it's just not for me yeah you know yeah so many people are are quick to dismiss an entire genre or whatever like you know like oh country music sucks i'm like well if you like get past uh like what you're on your radio or right, whatever like, you know that that pop country feels unnatural to yeah. me <laughs> but like true country western sure i can really get behind even and that doesn't even just mean willie nelson and right. johnny cash i mean there's um fuck now i'm killing my point um we well, got like guys like sturgill simpson and everything. ben nichols that's what ben, i was oh, trying to yeah, think like, of yeah lucero yeah yeah that's modern yeah that's, for sure yeah i don't uh like the white buffalo yeah i mean like I, there's just like so much that like great music that's but people are like again i mean that's i'm sure like you're saying with even with pop punk you probably felt it and stuff people like yeah. you know stuff like that like it's just People want to like, it's like, oh no, I don't like that, but they don't yeah. give it a chance even sometimes. Right, like pop punk. As much as I love it, I, for me personally, I can't sit and listen to it all day every day. But I, I mean, unless it's like four years strong, I don't know what sure. it is about those yeah. guys. But they've they have really hit me ever since I heard them the first time in like two thousand seven or eight. Right, I feel that way. Like I'm, I'm definitely by artist or you know, there's certain people across the all genres that are doing something cool that I like that or their particular voice or whatever it is that something reason that it, you know, I'm, I'm hooked to it. And like, uh, so yeah, there's, 
but I don't understand how people can just like dismiss an entire thing. So, yeah, but I don't know. I like to, uh, I like to challenge, you know, myself to continually to expand and, and grow as a human and stuff. So I like to and try to listen yeah. to stuff that would, right. you know, in the past have made you uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't need people's approval. I don't need somebody to uh, yeah. tell me it's cool to, so I can okay to listen to it and stuff. I just, I like to discover my own taste and my own pave my own path. Yeah. I remember back in like middle school and high school, it was like metal or nothing. Right. Cause everything else was too fruity. <laughs> how i used to be but yeah. then at some point it like flipped and i was like you know i i am allowed to like my chemical romance nobody's gonna burn me at the stake for it they, somebody might make fun of me but you know screw those guys All right yeah if they're insecure in themselves that they can't listen to something and appreciate the art that's on them not me i don't get much hardcore more hardcore than abba no way man yeah those dudes will break your skull <laughs> I bet they would throw down. Yeah. Those, those girls in that band, I bet they would not take shit from anybody. They're ABBA. They don't gotta. Right. <laughs> we're gonna beat you with all of our gold medals. You know, these guys that look like they're from the Bee Gees, they're yeah. not. They're from ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bee Gees. I, uh, I, I do find it uh, hilarious that um, the Foo Fighters did a whole Bee Gees cover, yeah. cover album and stuff. Uh, I don't know. What, when you're the Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Cause pretty much, yeah, yeah. You're Dave Grohl. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, this has been a ton of fun getting to hang. I really uh, appreciate you doing this, Brett. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It was fun. Yeah, man. It's nice to get behind a microphone again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll inspire you to get together and record some more new episodes and or get those other ones edited. And yeah, I'm gonna be. Yeah. I should just. Well, I can't. <laughs> I can't really do that on the road. I'm going to be, on Sunday, we're going to head out, and we're going to be gone for another 10 weeks. And because I recorded them in Logic, I can't just put them on a flash drive and edit them on my laptop. Yeah. And I don't really have the space to take the Mac Mini with me. <laughs> so I guess here they'll sit. Yeah. Unless I want to grind them out this weekend. I don't know. We'll see what I'm doing. All right. They do need to be put out to the public, though. Do it, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fun. Even if, like you said, she's uh, in Philadelphia, right, you said? Or, uh, or, she'll be moving out there in yeah. November. But, you know, like I did a lot of these over Zoom. When, uh, and, you know, if you both have a decent mic, you can you, – you, you get to record and you can't tell that you're not in the same room and stuff. Like there's some – I need to mail her – the microphone she yeah. i always had her use because i have two uh sure mv7 or m7v something like that basically the podcast mic that they just came out with last year that's supposed to be like a condensed version of the sm7b and they sounded crisp yeah for as cheap as they are i mean they msrp at like 250 bucks there's nothing for as good as they sound yeah so you got the warmth of a condenser, but like the diaphragm of a dynamic mic, kind of. Because hmm. if, you're, if you're like on the side of it, it won't pick you up. So we would be, which is perfect for us because we'd be sitting, I'd be here, and then she would be like there. So there was a lot of bleed in the mics we were using. Right. Made it weird to edit. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning a lot of it, but it's been fun to constantly... Uh, keep uh getting better at learning audio and stuff and a lot of trial and error kind of stuff figuring out what works and what's not working so i know i miss logic i got i got the so this windows laptop so now i gotta learn a whole new workstation yeah really messing me up <laughs> all right but uh get again uh, get plugged in with everbloom on your socials finding uh, the music wherever you're getting music and uh add it to your favorite playlist and Hopefully we'll get, uh, like I said, some shows on the calendar and as uh, finishing out the year and stuff. So uh, yeah, check out Mood and Talking Through Teeth. Yeah, man. To your most recent, be on the lookout for a new song later this year. I can't say the name of the song just yet, <laughs> but you're ready. Just be ready. It's gonna yeah. be good. <laughs> yeah, man. 
All right. Well, thanks, buddy. This has been cool, man. I'm really uh, glad this worked out. And again, thanks to Chuck for helping link us up. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. See ya. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.